Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at the attachment constraint now. Now, what the attachment constraint does is this. It links an object to another object based on a specific position. So as one thing is animated and moves, the other things will stay and move with it. Now, what that actually means is this. I put a ripple effect onto this plane. Well, I linked these two cylinders to the object. So now whatever happens with this, whatever happens, whatever changes, whatever is done with the plane, these objects will move with it. Regardless of how crazy or intense things become. So let's see how this was actually done. So I'm going to go file reset to get mine back to normal. And let's go ahead and just do this. First off, let's make a plane and let's give it about 30 by 30 segments. I'll hit up here to edged faces so I can see it. And just to make it easier, I'll go ahead and lift the plane up a little bit so the ground plane isn't seen with it. Okay, next up, I need some objects to kind of, you know, move. So I'm going to go with a sphere for one and a teapot for number two. Okay. So as with all the constraints, they can be found up here under animation constraints. We're looking at this one, the attachment. So with this teapot, I'm going to go animation constraints attachment constraint and because I had it selected now I just have to choose the next object and I'm going to choose this plane. Now when I do it's automatically going to bring us over here to the motion tab similar to where we were able to attach the paths for what we looked at last week. This week however we're going to take this same concept a little bit further. So by default it's already gone into this setting. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to click where it says set position. And I can just click, move, and drag somewhere on this plane that I want that thing to be attached to. When I'm done, I'll click set position again. And now it is saved. The other objects, or rather the other choices and settings in here are just to kind of help work on its movement. This is kind of just free to make on your own, but for the moment, we're going to go ahead and just keep going. So that was one. Now number two. Constraints, attachment, same object. Choose position, and I'm going to move it over here. Okay. So now I have all of that. And you'll note the position here is locked because I can't really do anything else. That said, if I press insert above the arrow keys, I can choose to move the pivot point. What that means is I can set this now for that pivot point or the spot that was connected from the original objects. I can move that around and change where I want things to be on this plane. Simply put, with this, I can have the teapot be partially submerged, but the ball, theoretically made out of air, or I'm sorry, filled with air or something, would probably not go as deep into this if it was, say, water. Well, that's great. And now whatever I do with the plane is going to keep those objects just there. But that includes what I'm about to do here. So with the plane selected, Hit my modifier drop down, and I'm going to come down to Ripple. Now with Ripple, it gives me a few things. Amplitude 1 and Amplitude 2. Wavelength lets us choose if we want things really close together or really far apart. Essentially, do we want nice gentle waves or do we want something a bit more rough? Well, regardless of which one we choose, and I'll go with a bigger wavelength for this. I also now have phase and decay. Decay, we're just going to leave it zero. 
I'm going to turn on Auto Key. And with Phase, all that really matters is that I take it and start it somewhere, move the timeline, and set this at, say, that. What that means is, over that amount of time, it'll keep rippling. Well, 10 might be a little much, so I'm going to go ahead and put it down to like a 3. And whatever happens with this plane, the sphere and the teapot will follow the waves and stay in their spot. Now, this is, this is fine. It's a little bit fast, so obviously I can rescale my time. And I'm going to set it to something like 300. Give me 10 seconds of this. So over that 10 seconds, I'll get some gentle moving waves and ripples and stuff. But I mean, I can do more than that. And I'm going to do this just because I want to, but I'll do it like this and just change where I want that center of the ripple to be. So it'll still move on the same amount of phase. I just moved that origin point for it. So now, everything's moving nice and gently, and it doesn't look like there's a whirlpool about to start in the middle. As far as the attachment constraint goes, that's about all we really need to see about it for now. So, that's it for this one, and I'll see you in the next one.